it's first thing in the morning again. I think it might be about six o'clock. Um, I do this every morning. I get up between five and five thirty and do as much painting as I can before I have to leave for the day. And then I get home and I really try to paint some more after walking the dog and feeding Bugsy and Kitty and doing all those things. I try and paint some more and then I really try to stick to my goal of doing the working on the children's book, but I haven't the past few days. So I'm embarrassed because I posted it on YouTube to keep me in check and to keep me working. And <laughs> I'm just too tired. Uh, the illness takes over. By the end of the day, I'm shaking and I, I can barely function. So I just need, you know, stuff. I need to be propped up. Um, but I wanted to talk about, since I'm trying to talk about my art and why I do what I do, um, because I get asked about it a lot, and I have been asked to give talks, and I have been asked to do interviews, but I'm really not comfortable. I'm not comfortable talking art, and I can talk about it from the outside as though I'm a spectator looking at someone else's work, um, looking in. But it's just like, well, I do this because of, you know, ethereal reasons. It's like, ugh, I hate those interviews. I hate watching people give those interviews. And they make these lo lofty explanations sometimes that are so awkward and obviously panned and thought out. Um, they just don't feel genuine. I need to learn to talk about my art in a... In a um, and not just a, you know, a meaningful pat way. That's horrible. But also so people, maybe I can confirm or validate what other people are seeing in my art and what they're expressing to me they see in my art. I don't know. But we have to learn to talk about it. It's just I don't talk about it in the art language with the bigger words and, you know, because who knows what they mean. I'm not sure. I know I don't. But um, someone said linear to me. I still have absolutely no idea what it means when you're talking about art. But anyway, um, I wanted to talk about something else as pertaining to fabulous me. I get emails. I get really angry emails sometimes after I post a video um, about being an artist. And how I feel I've really earned that title because I work very hard at it all the time. Every few moment that I have is dedicated to art. I have given up everything for art. Every, everything. Everything has gone into this. And I've put myself at a precipice of almost being homeless for my art because I cannot stop. I'm not going to give up so that I can buy a sandwich. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to give up the money that could go towards supplies so I can buy a sandwich. I'm not going to give up money th that could go towards supplies so I can buy new clothes or new shoes. Or I, I don't ever go anywhere. I don't... Taking... Going to a movie... Going to a movie is... It, I mean, it's a fantastic idea, but it's also daunting because it's money and time that could could, could, could go towards producing more work that I am so driven to do. It's in my, it's in my blood. It's in my, it, oh, this is just going to get so arty. I can literally feel the drive and the need to paint running through my veins. It's just constantly pulsating and pushing. And all I can think when I'm somewhere else is I need to be home. It probably could be a mental illness like OCD, but I don't care because I only have so much time left on the earth. Any of us do. Why would I spend it watching someone else's art? So why would I watch someone else's movie when I could be here? Why would I, why would I do anything else? This is, this is why I was born. So why would I waste it? But I wanted to address something that people write to me quite a bit, 
when I get lofty like that, they say, you know, um, kind of in nasty tones that they're that they're not an insider; they're outside art. Out, they do outsider art. And I'm, it's taken me a while to understand um, what people mean, and that actually, and to say, I'm not an insider at all. I'm nowhere near an insider. I'm a woman in the middle of, in the middle of a lonely little city, where, like, I'm just producing work. An insider, and I kind of know how to articulate this now. An insider is an artist or someone in the art world who is actually in the art world. They've found their place through pedigree, education, and lots of legs up connections. <laughs> none of which I have. None. None. I never finished college. Um, I have no pedigree. My parents were, my father was a lawyer and um, my mother was a homemaker who enjoyed church and clubbing. Clubs, not clubbing. My mother was not a, you know, party monster. She enjoyed clubs. She did knitting clubs. She did sewing clubs. She did, you know, clubs at church. She did Eastern Star, um, you know, part of the Masons, the women's version of Masons. I, I, I have no connection. No one around me was an art. No one. No one, no one. So I have no pedigree. I did go to the Boston Museum School for a very short period of time and was deathly uncomfortable and left. And I had no, no confidence or ability to understand what they were saying or to like even roam the halls. I, like, it was a foreign world. Um, I was from a tiny town on Cape Cod. There wasn't like, there was a thriving art community on the Cape, but I wasn't a part of it. So I didn't fit in. I went to a commercial art school after that for a little, for a year, dropped out of there. I went to Cape Cod Community College for a while, didn't finish there. I learned the most from other artists, but this is what an outsider does. They, they learn themselves, they teach themselves that you go through the process. I hate that word, but you go through this process where you're just trying to figure shit out. You're trying to figure out what you're doing, how you're going to do it, how to get there. You learn from other artists, so you do it, learn through experiment, like me, most of the time. I had one, one, um, one artist teach me kind of about color, but it took me 20 years to figure out what she was saying. So here we are. I've developed techniques that are all mine. I've developed work techniques that are all mine, painting techniques that are all mine. I've learned about mediums through, I learned through, I learned about Neil McGilp from a salesman in an art supply store on Cape Cod um, in Orleans, Cape, Cape Cod Photo and Art. This kid said, try this. And I've been using Neo McGill ever since for like 10, 11 years. So it's, and I've learned surfaces on my own. So when people send me upset and angry emails about something about me being an insider, I'm no insiders. Insider, insiders are showing at museums, in big museums. Insider are the, you know, Cream of the crop, and I don't mean that most... <sighs> By cream of the crop, I don't mean they're the most talented people in the world, because most of them, I don't get it. Like, I I just don't get, I don't get why they're there, other than privilege. They've been afforded a privilege through pedigree and education, and most of them don't have anything to say. They don't have really anything to contribute that I've seen. It's hollow. It's absolutely hollow. But they're being celebrated. And it's upsetting to someone like me who's like, who really works their ass off all alone in the middle of nowhere, but makes silly little videos. And I make these videos not just to help other people or to promote myself, 
but it's also to help me work through what I'm doing and to see a little, little bit clearer and understand who I am better and to, 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 um, to, oh, it's very early in the morning to do something. So I get a thing and I have some courage, I guess, to keep me honest and to keep building courage. I don't know. I have to get back to this thing. Oh, I do want to share something that my non-artisty mother said to me once. She was an artist in her own way. She was a craftsman. She did crafty things. She great, great at sewing, like really wonderful sewer. Um, she did crochet and knitting and, um, you know, craft, craft stuff, homemade craft stuff. Um, she was mean about it, but she did it. That was her world. You know, this is what I know how to do. You can keep out because I'm really great at this. You can't be whatever. That, that woman did say one thing to me, probably when I was 15, 18, somewhere in there, and it's always stuck with me, and it's one of the best things that anyone ever taught me. She said, I was trying, I don't know, I think I was trying to paint something, and I was using acrylics, and I was very awkward at it, and ugh. She said, Becky, you don't need to paint the whole, the whole thing. You don't need to paint the whole subject. You can paint a suggestion. Just a suggestion will get the idea across. She may not have said it exactly like that, but that's how it translated in my head. And that one piece of advice has actually stuck with me so much that it helped me to develop a new way of painting, something I haven't really seen a lot and the, the way I paint just kind of happened through experiment and years of just trying. But I paint in suggestions. The cat is under my table playing with something. Probably going to poke out and attack my leg in a minute. But I paint in suggestions. The lines are suggestions. And it also, it, in painting just suggestions, it shows the development of the painting itself, the development of the image. Um, through those suggestions, it translates to a whole picture. But it isn't just showing you the development, it's showing you the um, deep, the something. <sighs> Not just the construction of the painting, but the deconstructing of the act of painting itself. And that's something I'll talk about later. Um, so it's what I'm doing is multi-layered. It's not just here is an image. This is what a person looks like. This is a figure. Blah blah blah. It's construction and deconstruction at the same time, which is very lofty. And I will talk about that another time. Kitty's attacking something in plastic now, so I'm gonna go. I'm going to go into my little outsider world and just keep producing work and keep producing videos and keep posting stuff online and keep my fingers crossed. But there is no pedigree going on here at all. None. I'm a mutt. I'm a total mutt. This mutt's getting back to work now. Ciao.